Welcome to episode four, in which a pandemic makes us all have to be hmm, more deliberate in choosing to have a good day. You are at Goody Two Sticks Knits, where every piece of knitting tells a story. Up today, we've got a fun lineup. You're going to meet yarn dyer and designer Cheryl J. Cox. This knit coat right here is going to tell its story. The yarn giveaway winner will be announced. The new yarn giveaway will be announced. And today's knitting tip is going to give you a new level of comfort with the G word. I promise. Drum roll, please. The winner of these two fingering weight skeins, the hand dyed one, is. Yeah, merino wool and alpaca, and this one is wool and silk. Congratulations to Marilyn. Okay, Marilyn, please message me on Ravelry.com or on Instagram. I am Goody Two Sticks both places. My contact information is in the show notes below. So get in touch with me and we'll figure out how to get these skeins to you. Congratulations again. Off my sticks. Yeah, off my sticks. I always love seeing what other people have been making. Do you? That's always motivating for me. Well, off my sticks is this beautiful knit coat, really. It is the Sylvie pattern by Mari Muinanen. It's available on Ravelry.com. This particular garment is made of Lamb's Pride Bulky by Brown Sheep. I am sorry to tell you I don't remember the name of the colorway, but those, those brown sheep yarns are really good workhorse yarns, and this was a delight to work with. One of the things that attracted me to this pattern was that in the back, there is this vine, this cabled vine that just wends its way up, up, up. So there are leaves and giant flowers and it looks so alive and so fun. And I just fell in love with that. It's interesting because from the front, this garment looks like a perfectly normal seed stitch cardigan that's really long. But from the back, my goodness, you leave a, a lasting impression that's pretty nice. This, actual pattern does have a hood, but I left it off. And the truth is, I knit this garment much faster than I should have knit it. And that story is coming up in just a few minutes. Right now, I have the pleasure of introducing to you Cheryl J. Cox. All of her contact information is in the show notes below, but I'm going to tell you right now as well. Her, her website is essenceofautumnyarn.com. On both Instagram and Ravelry, she is Essence of Autumn. And on YouTube, she is Essence of Autumn Yarn. Cheryl Cox is the dyer and knitwear designer of Essence of Autumn Yarn. And I'm going to quote her. In our part of the world, which is Canada, autumn is a breathtaking, spectacularly beautiful and unruly time of year. That fresh, invigorating spirit makes you want to breathe deeply and fill your lungs with the joy of living. This essence does not depend on location or time of year. 
It is a journey and adventure that impels you to grab a hold of life and experience it. That spirit, that essence of autumn, is what we try to capture in our yarns and designs. And in my opinion, they have succeeded. Look at this flourish shawl. It would take you from early spring clear into fall. Cheryl describes it as being in the gorgeous pinks of crab apple blossoms. This knit shawl has a crocheted edging and it's made out of fingering weight silk. Here is the warm embrace slouchy. I fell in love with its bold color, its simple stitches, its fuzzy texture. And the fact that it's made of worsted weight yarn is gonna mean it knits up in a hurry. Guess what? I saved the best for last. This winter wander lust wrap is my favorite of her designs. And it's knit in the stranded color work method and uses worsted weight yarn, which makes it work up more quickly than fingering weight would. I think you would have fun knitting it up. Boy, would I love to. Cheryl, thanks for letting me feature you today. It's such a pleasure to get to introduce our viewers to wonderful work like yours. Back to the story of this coat. I was miserably sick with a respiratory lung thing and was prescribed prednisone. That's a steroid, you know, and it wound me up to beat the band. Oh my goodness, I didn't sleep day or night for the whole two weeks I was on it, which meant that I knit this thing up in less than a week and a half. That's too fast. That's too fast. It's a bad thing to not get any sleep. Capital bad, capital thing. But the silver lining was getting this whole thing knit so quickly. And not only this, but also 10 pair of fingerless mitts that I used as gifts. Well, I'm bringing this story up right now because this is a time when we are together and alone, um, dealing with some unknown difficulties, kind of waiting to see how this thing all plays out. And, and so we're having to look for silver linings. Do you have somebody that you're talking to through this? Are you keeping in touch with people? Um, we all deal with things like this a little bit differently. The way I deal with it is by running to the Lord and keeping in touch with other people. But we all have these basic human needs and emotions that don't go away during times like this. So um, I'm speaking to myself as much as to you. Dig deep, Elizabeth. Let's move along to today's knitting tip. Okay, everybody, hold your nose on it. Okay, talking about gauge. Gauge is the foundation of garment design. It, it is the key to knitting something that fits. Oh, my nostrils stuck together. There, back to normal. Give me less than two minutes and I will remove your dread of the G word. Promise. Take a peek. Pretend you're knitting a pattern for a 40 inch sweater that calls for a gauge of 20 stitches over four inches, which is five stitches per inch. If the gauge is off only one half stitch in either direction, the garment will not be the desired 40 inches in circumference, but either 36 and a third or 44 and a half inches. Oh no, it does not fit. 
gauge is determined by number one, yarn size. Number two, needle size. And number three, your own personal knitting tension. To fix gauge when you know your yarn choice is correct, try changing your needle size first. Here is a swatch for flat knitting. If you're knitting in the round, your swatch should also be knit in the round. Think baby hat. Begin with a needle a size smaller than suggested. Knit a few inches. Work a purl bump row. Change needles, going up a size. Work another segment and keep doing this with as many size needles as desired. Wash and block the swatch. This often changes the gauge. Measure honestly by using pins to mark a four inch width. Count the stitches between the pins. This is the number of stitches per four inches as gauges are often referenced. Divide this number by four to get the stitches per inch. The average knitter's gauge changes one half stitch per inch or two stitches per four inches when they move one needle size up or down. If you're getting too many stitches per inch, that means the work is too tight. Use a larger needle. If there are too few stitches per inch, the work is too loose. Use a smaller needle. And finally, attach a label stating the needle sizes used and file the swatch for future use. Are you ready for our new giveaway? Ta-da! If ever there was a giveaway I felt like not giving away and keeping for myself, it's this one. I love this stuff. Of course, I knit it myself, so why wouldn't I like it? Hmm, it is two skeins of worsted weight, 100% super wash merino wool, 100 grams, 220 yards. Oh my. It's a ray of sunshine. We could all use a ray of sunshine. And if some of you are afraid of orange, learn how to not be afraid of orange. You don't have to make a whole complete orange thing, although I like orange, so that would be fine with me. But even if you just add a little pop of orange in with something that is a different color or many different colors, it adds so much life. Orange is a lively color. To enter for this giveaway, this is what you do. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, subscribe and leave a comment. You have to both be subscribed and leave a comment. And when you do, you will automatically be entered for this giveaway. Well, time to wind up with a little heart health tip. We have what it takes, we do, to dig a little deeper. So let's do that, dear ones. Let's make today into something beautiful. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Happy day.